Right. Good afternoon, Tower. This is the, this is Enrico's talk on the Debian Community Guidelines, or how to be able to achieve total world domination through discussion on Debian Devel. Without much further ado, Enrico! Thanks for the cheerful presentation. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Enrico Zini. Someone knows me from stuff. And uh, I'm, I've been working in the past probably year and a half on putting this together and I'm not very far into it, but um, I got something kind of usable so it's pretty much time to present it publicly. So um, here's my recent work, the Demi Community Guidelines, um, which are, uh, well, the Debian Community Guidelines uh, started actually with a conversation with Martin Michelmeyer when he was DPL. And I was complaining of a couple of, well, a few bad answers I was getting from people on uh, IRC or lists when I was asking for things. And uh, since my ego is too big and it couldn't have been my fault, uh, I started wondering what could have been wrong. and. And so I reported things to the DPL that we could have communication problems and, and Martin told me something like, uh, there's no, uh, where does it see what is good and so on. And so I had the idea of starting collecting, well, mm, um, list of things that could be like good to assert in Debian, but that would have been the, that sounded too much like the Teletubby thing, a uh, be nice guide, which I soon realized it was a stupid idea. So eventually I came up um, with a slightly different idea for what could be a document that could improve communication a bit in Debian. And uh, the idea is to have a collection of what people normally do that works well. Um, it is actually very hard to, to do because the thing you notice in lists is what people normally do that works really bad. And so it's been a long work, especially because you need to spot things that work well and you need to train yourself to be able to spot that. And uh, these things are put down as a list of suggestions for people to work online more efficiently. Uh, the Debian Community Guidelines are not a policy. Um, many people, especially during the DPL election, have been um, talking about making some social policy that would make it outlaw uh, for people not to be nice in Debian, and that's exactly not my approach. Um, uh, especially because the, the more law you put into social behavior, the more you bias and screw up social behavior, basically. So uh, I want suggestions, but I don't want them to be mandatory. I'm like with, I like to think that I'm not the, the, the person that knows social thing the best, and someone can always have better ideas than me. So I don't want to mandate anything. And they're not a way to point fingers at people. Uh, the, that would just make things work if we that, that would just make things worse if we start pointing at each other like, you don't respect point seven dot AE of the Debian community guidelines. That like, <laughs> wouldn't make things easier in Debian, right? And they're not perfect. They're a continuous work in progress. Uh, and they're not, hopefully, inquisition stuff, um, right? So in this talk, why am I giving this talk? I'm giving this talk because I would like to have the guidelines become something, become something a bit more mainstream. So I want you to know what is in the guidelines. And so since you're not going to read them here, I will go step by step through it with you. Uh, I would like you to tell people about the guidelines when you think it will be useful, um, but not as a finger pointing. And uh, I would like you to watch out for potential additions to the guideline because, it, as I said, it's non-trivial to spot 
useful suggestions for the guidelines, and that's something that is better done with different sets of eyes. And so in this talk, I will go through what is in the guidelines, tell you my plans for the guidelines, and ask you for ideas of further steps to take with them. So, before I start, is some free editorial dogmas that I uh, forced myself to follow because I think it could be useful. And uh, so the, the DCG, Debian Community Guidelines, should be a collection of suggestions and not a collection of blames. So you, you will never see in the Community Guidelines something like, you are really bad if you do that. You will never see like bad people do that, some of these sort of things. Or at least you're not supposed to see that. If you do, it's a bug. The suggestion must be something useful for all the parties involved in the communication. That is the only way for the, such suggestions to have a chance of being used. Uh, it makes no sense to have a suggest to suggest something to someone that would just make things worse for this person. Obviously, this person would never follow the suggestion. And uh, of course, people who's been listening to my usability talk in the previous DEPCONF know uh, you ca brain doesn't hold more than seven plus minus two items, so every section cannot have more than six or seven points. After the dogmas, we go into the beginning and main part of the guideline. Uh, right, sorry. Uh, we're going to the index of the guideline. Um, I um, didn't have this slide in my brain. The, the guideline is split in uh, uh, three parts. Uh, the main guidelines, which is the most important part, is four points which ideally should be general suggestions that are general enough to, uh, to, to summarize the entire work with the idea that no one is going to read a long document and if someone is in a hurry you want to, to, to bring something useful to them as well. And then there's a list of more detailed guideline, um, suggestions or guidelines um, that are communication specific and a list uh, that for things that are Debian specific. So that's the content. And we go into the main guidelines. It's these four. You can just listen to these slides and if you're boring, if you're bored of the talk, you can just leave after this slide. It's the most important one. Um, it's four point. One is uh, uh, strive for quality. Uh, try to work for quality. What quality means is up to every one of us. I like the word quality because it can be relocated to whatever is uh, everyone's uh, set of values, but the idea is that you want to do your best in everything you do. Um, also because, well, everything you post will contribute to the knowledge, usefulness and look of Debian, but it will also be publicly archived and found by others in out of context and out of the time frame that you were intending for that message. So you really want to write a good future for yourself. Um, so this is a point that helps both people reading your message and both you as of your image. <coughs> you want to work with others, otherwise you could just be a lonely upstream and have a Debian developer take care of you. Um, and then with work with others means uh, trying to improve the quality of the community as a whole, help to improve everyone's packages, which could mean <laughs> Uh, co-maintain, but you ne not necessarily have to co-maintain, so that's a hi to Manoj. Um, and you, you can just help to improve uh, other people's packages by providing nicer tools for them, nicer guidelines, nicer um, suggestions, uh, how to steps, uh, testing tools, whatever, that improves the quality of everything as a whole. Uh, you can share your ideas and plans, allow people to help and contribute, thank people, these sort of things. Then this is something that kind of helps everyone because, well, you, d you help others and you get help. Um, right? And then principle do not change and the rest changes with work. So this gives the idea that, okay, we have something in Debian that we all agree 
with, which is not much, social contract and Debian free software guideline. And then all the rest we can change it with our work. We don't go very far with just talking, but as soon as we start working, we can change a lot. And the last one is my favorite one. Well, they're all actually very important, but um, last one is, so if, if there is a conflict of some kind, um, especially you see someone that is being arrogant or unreasonable uh, in, in a conversation, um, it's best to support the one who's being reasonable rather than attack the one who's being arrogant. Um, attacking the person who's being arrogant doesn't solve any problem and just makes the atmosphere worse. But supporting the one who's being reasonable actually reduces the, the gravity and the annoyance of the attack. So that is kind of like something that, it's a, it's a suggestion that is aimed at like having, mm, uh, going into a more sustainable kind of discussion even when things go wrong, make some sort of fault tolerance, tolerate faults in communication. So these are the main guidelines. Now I'll go through the ones that are more specific and um, people can fall asleep and digest. Burps are tolerated. Um, so um, we, I said there's main guideline, communication specific guideline and Debian specific guidelines. These are the communication guidelines which are in turn split in three. One is improving the content, one the presentation, and the other the sustainability of the communication. So this is about the content. So the idea is that if you want to write messages that have good quality in the content and um, are useful to people, you want to ensure that you are adding information to the discussion. Um, you don't it, a post doesn't have quality if it doesn't add something to a body of knowledge. Uh, well, RTFM, a read of the fine manual, is a good example of something that doesn't add much uh, content to the discussion besides saying that the answer that someone was looking for is written somewhere. Um, and of course, if someone already knew where to read the fine manual, they wouldn't bother to ask. So, uh, and also try not to repeat your points. Some big problem we have in Debian is people repeating themselves over and over again. That just doesn't help. And um, it works fine to, to let your, to your, your point be heard once and not insist unless you can come up with code, specification, a technical explanation to back it up. Um, it al it's also less frustrating for people who write a message to, uh, if, if you actually add something else and people will read your message, not just skip you and uh, you will actually enforce your point. But if you just repeat your old point, then it's frustrating because no one will end up listening to it. And um, share the help you receive. So um, when solving a problem creates knowledge and knowledge is good to be shared, um, so uh, you can turn an IRC conversation or an email conversation into a blog entry or a wiki page, a short tutorial, a how-to. You can encourage people to share the help. So I will help you if you then write uh, the results of your problem fixing into a wiki page. Um, when, you, when you receive help, try to take notes uh, and share them. Uh, sometimes it's uh, Bdale was uh, pointing to me that sometimes you give a suggestion to someone on how to solve a problem, but you wouldn't actually be able to solve the problem. You just put this person in the right direction and this person actually gets beyond what you would have done. So it's nice if this person actually at the end can post what it's done and you could figure out, oh, damn it, that, that I didn't think it could go that far. So, yeah, share the help you receive. Do some research before posting. That um, makes a very good quality of the content of a message and as well makes you look smart. Um, I found out that I look unbelievably smart 
to the eyes of most of my friends because every time they ask me a question, I just paste the question on Google and tell them what I get back. <laughs> and yeah, so some friends use me actually as a kind of Google, which kind of annoys me. But, um, but yeah, if you do a little bit of research before answering people, um, you, you really end up looking smart and, and people will like what you write. And uh, know what you want and make sure people know what they want. That is a hard one. So this point actually expands into four questions that are called the Flanagan critical incident technique that could be useful for debugging social problems. Like if you can't understand what went wrong, you can ask yourself or the other person what led up to the situation, what did you do that was specifically effective or ineffective, what was the outcome or result of this action, and why was this action effective or what more effective action might have been expected. That read like, if I read it like this doesn't make any sense, but I only wanted to tell you that um, this, the, the four magic questions are in here. And I've been told that they kind of help. Um, so that's about improving the content. And uh, the presentation of the message is important as well, unfortunately. But in a small group, say the dev text mailing list, uh, with, with there's like five active, uh, five active people. Um, it doesn't really matter about the presentation of the content of a message. Because then there's, it's low traffic and, and you can actually spend a bit more time trying to figure out what's the point of a mail. But on a big high traffic mailing list, people tend to skim through messages. Uh, you need to, to bring out the message as efficiently as possible. So you want to have the shortest mail which most completely gets the point. And that is kind of hard. So suggestions for that are put the main point at the beginning and the long details later. Actually Mako told me a nice tip which is um, you start writing the mail and usually you start with your reasoning that gets to the main point. And at the end you, may, you actually cleared up your mind while writing and and you get to the main point to write in a very coincise form. So you should just copy it and paste it to the top of the mail so that people can see right away what you are aiming for and w w what is your point. And Mako then added, and then you delete all the rest. <laughs> Which actually makes sense. <laughs> because, yeah, one, one error that we often make is to, to actually put our um, cognitive process in the mail and you start the mail with some intention but not with clear ideas and you have the clear ideas at the end but then you feel like you don't want to throw away all that effort you had in writing the mail but at least you can just turn the mail upside down and put the main point at the beginning and leave the rest as like more rationale about things that people could or could not skip and that's point one Point two is uh, talk with code or patches. Uh, well, that's especially on technical mailing list, of course. Like, you don't want to talk with code or patches in Debian project, probably. But um, that just makes things more clear. You can, like, test them right away. Um, that's probably the most efficient form of communication we, we have in our world when, when it's actually applicable. So, um, and sometimes, it's hard to say something in English, so and it's easier to say like in C, Ruby, chicken, uh, whatever language you know best. I like chicken a lot. I have never seen it, but I, a Swig can generate bindings of my libraries in chicken, so I got attached to it. I like the idea that I could contribute to chicken development. Yeah, so you can like make examples on your language of choice and. It will generally, generally be understandable by readers, unless you like to program in BrainFuck. But, <laughs> well. Um, and then, point to existing resources. This is actually um, a nice big one. Um, sometimes, if a problem has been solved or a point has already been made, you can condense your message by just collapsing it into a link. 
And if, there no, if there's no existing resource which is good enough, you can actually create it. Um, and like in a wiki, or you can improve it if it's found on a wiki. Um, so you can actually like externalize a bit the body of knowledge and, and contribute to, to make like a wider amount of, uh, of a, a wider body of knowledge grow up. I mean, someone could just paste from your mail and contribute to a wiki page, but while you are writing, and if you have to write a lengthy and detailed mail, that could just go in a wiki page and be easily linkable and uh, improvable by um, everyone interested. And uh, use a plain and simple style. That is probably one of the most difficult points because uh, I'm Italian. I've been studying Latin in high school, and when they put that in your mind, you don't write simple phrases anymore. And I know that the Germans have the same problem even when they don't study Latin. <laughs> and, uh, and so really, I mean, uh, language have different ways of building phrases. So, so that, that needs a bit of effort, but it really pays off. I found out that people were not understanding my mails, even if they had simple content, because they were absolutely twisted. So I really made some effort, and I don't know if that improved, but I like to think that it did. Um, right. And especially, an, another nice uh, important point inside user plain and simple style is um, try to skip rhetorical um, writing, rhetorical questions and all that sort of things. M people may not understand them as you've intended to write them and you end up picking up a fight without noticing why. Um, if I if I ask a rhetorical question, people may understand that I actually meant to ask that question because they couldn't hear what was my tone of voice when I read the mail. And, uh, and then they could just not answer in the way I would expect them to answer and that may all degenerate. So the clearest, the better. And uh, I wouldn't like this to sound like um, sterilizing the language of Debian and because it's actually really nice to, to, to enjoy in advanced use of the language, and luckily we have good places to do that, like Debian Curiosa and Planet Debian. So, but the, in a technical mailing list, it, it's good to be simple. Third and last part of the communication-specific guidelines is uh, just the sustainability thing. You want the conversation to be sustainable. You, you not only want to have good conversation today, but you'd like it to, to, to have like a, a good, uh, enjoyable, and actually productive conversation like now and in the future. We want to have a community which keeps being good, even if, if it grows up. So that's actually a bit more detailed. That's mo there's more points, and um, it's uh, five. I go near the limit of six or seven, and I think I cheat because the first point opens in four points more, so needs improving. Um, so first point is read messages smartly, which almost means nothing unless I expand it in exercise your will, which is... Um, it's up to you to decide if a message is important or not. A message is not important if it's the last on a thread, um, especially if the thread is very long. Um, a message, uh, well, a message is important if it meets your needs and motivation mainly. Um, it's not important if someone important writes it or anything. Um, so. That, that is most important, like, um, to, to read messages according to, to what I really need, uh, what I really want. Try to interact with human beings instead of single messages. Like, behind every message is a person. And a person who is usually nice may get really upset one day. 
uh, but that doesn't mean that the person suddenly became evil, or if you have the feeling that the person suddenly became evil, then you can send them an email asking what happened. Um, in the end, like, uh, nice things after the DevConfs is that we generally like um, get to know each other in person, and when we see that w w someone of us is having a bad time on, on mailing list, we kind of figure out that the person hasn't become like an asshole right away, but may just you know be having a hard time or something. And uh, try to be forgiving. Um, this is like the optimist suggestion, which is when you are unsure about the intentions of a message, assume good intentions, which kind of helps um, avoid uh, uh, to raise a big uh, noise by mistake. And be tolerant of personal differences, especially uh, yeah, especially since we are people who are very different from each other inside the project, nationalities, habits, religion, whatever. Uh, but even if like we would, some of us would probably kill each other when meeting in real life, happily it doesn't happen often. Uh, actually, uh, happily, it doesn't happen often. Uh, so we wouldn't work together as like roommates, maybe, but we can work together online, in like Debian itself, and it would be a waste to lose good technical work, good technical cooperation, just because we have a different set of beliefs outside of the scope of Debian. So that, that's about reading messages smartly. Try not to become victims of um, preconceptions, bad mood, uh, whatever. Could be wrong in one day. And then I have be positive before being negative. This is absolutely difficult. And I tell you because I tried to do it during the whole writing of the guidelines and try to put positive phrases before negative phrases. The result in, is more rewarding and pleasant to read. If I say, uh, if I translate this into don't put negative phrases before positive phrases, it doesn't sound as good. It sounds already as finger pointing. It's a kind of a style uh, thing that, that actually can make like a bug report uh, much more pleasant to read. Um, the, the problem is we are used at working with bug reports and the bug report starts with this thing doesn't work. So we are using at starting our conversation with this is broken, this sucks. We take like a very good proposal that we like a lot and we see there's a small flow in it so we reply to the message, we delete all the quote except for the broken part, and we say this is broken. <laughs> and all the rest is lost. Um, and it goes into the Warnock dilemma of has that been deleted because it was good, or has then been deleted because it was unimportant or rubbish? So, uh, so we are used that the, 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 the technical uh, instruments that we use kind of leads us in the direction of just remarking what is wrong. And we do it in order to improve. But that kind of conditions the way we discuss in, in a way that it goes towards being a little bit unpleasant. And, um, and yeah, if, if we want to get our message through, like being able to report a flaw in someone's reasoning or work without making it feel like an insult, trying to be positive before being negative, putting positive phrases before the negative phrases is a very good way of doing it. And then give credit where credit is due. Not much to say about it. I think many of us actually put um, acknowledgements uh, as needed. That is also, I, mean, I, I found out that putting acknowledgements is also useful if you then like need to change the license or need to find out who wrote a line of code and so you still have the name around. 
and uh, be respectful and polite. Uh, this is just, if you write in an unpleasant manner, people won't feel motivated to work with you. So it's kind of like trivial, but. And uh, help the public knowledge evolve. So um, you want to have like work to be uh, sustainable by not being wasted. So it's good to reply to the list if you have a problem. Actually, Lars was telling me that there was um, a community in which he was involved in which they would have all replies to questions being private and then people would post back a summary of the problem solution but he said that there, he knows of only two people who are able to do that efficiently in the whole world so uh, reply to the list when solving when, when providing suggestions is actually a good trade-off and one could take from list messages and make wiki pages and build FAQs and whatever. But that's still, well, quite trivial. Encourage people to share the help they receive. I think this is repeated from another part of the guideline, so that needs fixing. And, uh, oh, this is a big one. Um, w sustaining a discussion towards solving a problem is sometimes more important than solving a problem. It doesn't sound very clear, probably needs rewarding, but um, I'm not native, so I don't usually get the best of the what English can do. So suppose you, you get like a bug report or you want to improve something and you can kind of see how to do it and you feel confident that you could actually do it well, but you don't have time today. So that's something that, that, that happens to us and we tend to procrastinate and say, okay, I won't answer this message, I'll flag it important and answer it tomorrow. And then after six months, you still have that message flagged important. And I think we should all remove from Matt all the options of marking messages unread, flagging them important, and all those damn things I use to, to, to forget about the things I should remember. Um, so the thing is, instead of trying to solve a problem that we may when we may not have enough time, it's good enough to bring the discussion forward. So replying by saying, um, I, I don't have time to fix this now, but I would look in that direction. I would try to improve in that point that may allow someone to bring it on. And it actually happened to me. I, I tried to do it once and actually people, uh, w when I woke up the next morning, people were almost uh, reaching the solution by themselves and because they could actually build on the, on the good direction I gave. So, so yeah, instead of, it, it's best not to try to solve a problem and not manage, but um, instead to, to, to to bring people in, in forward as much as one can according to the limited time of the, of the moment. And this is the end of the communication guidelines. There's two more parts that mini how to's like how to bring long threads to a conclusion or how to cope with flame wars, but um, I'll skip them, especially because this one is almost empty. Uh, well, I could use more suggestions, but um, yeah. One suggestion I've always followed: uh, if if you receive an email that makes you angry, the first thing I do is I turn off the computer and walk a couple of miles and get back to that email a week later. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's another important one. Uh, As an alternative solution, I generally write the angry email and get it out of my system and then don't send it. And then if I'm still angry about it, the next day I edit all the anger out and say the reasons why I was angry. Yeah, yeah so coping with emails that make us angry could be like either have a walk, go to the fridge or something, uh, or uh, write a very angry reply and throw it away without sending it. Um, what? Ah, you keep it. 
Okay. Right. So he said, like, uh, write the angry reply and keep it there and bring it back later. And so maybe you would cut away most of the angry part or you're not angry anymore. So you don't go into that vicious circle in, in which you answer with an angry reply and the person answers to you while you're still angry and you beat each other within half an hour. Yeah, so this is BDL. The two suggestions I throw out to people about this all the time are number one, if you read something that you know gets your blood pressure up, then absolutely, um, immediately sit there and type out a reply and don't send it. This does two things. One, um, it allows you to get all of the stuff that you're frustrated about out of your system and down into a file somewhere. And if you don't send it immediately, but instead go off and do something completely different, when you come back and look at it, you may go, eh, that's not going to help. And in the meantime, six other people have already called them a whatever, and you know you don't have to. The second piece is that if there's a particular thing in the middle of somebody's post that you want to reply to that you think is wrong or you need to correct or you want to add some valuable information to or whatever your definition of the reply is, um, focus on that. Um, one of the things I've discovered is that sometimes when uh, discussions go the most wrong and they get the most bile built up and they get into these huge long threads, it's because people are, are putting too much stuff in each message. And it, it, it makes it hard for people to figure out how to either just sort of take or not take that thing. You know, if you, if you put 20 points in a message and one of those irritates the other person, they're likely to respond to all 20 points. And it'd be a whole lot simpler if, you know, we all figured out how to just respond to the thing that we really need to respond to. Thanks, B. Dale. Uh, did everyone pick them up? Do I need to re uh, repeat it? It's fine. Right, so we, from there we go into the Debian specific guideline and I hurry up a bit because I'd like to have a little bit of Q&A and I think I have like five minutes, so ugh. Yeah, so it's about package management. There's a couple of, well, uh, it could be added to the, to the um, developer reference. There's a few suggestions on how to work with others and uh, public, where to publish bizarre dark trees and that sort of thing. And how to handle bug back reports and, well, simple stuff I, I skip over, I guess. Um, uh, they, they would need improvement. Unfortunately, uh, the, the more you go through uh, towards the end of the guideline, the more the quality of the guideline decreases a bit because I always start reviewing them from the beginning and my brain is bored when I'm halfway through. Um, so what to do uh, on the future with the, with the guideline is, well, my first idea is to add it to the new maintainer process documentation. Um, I wouldn't ask questions about them because they're like, uh, but I would just like to suggest people who have a read and that may make their interaction with Debian more efficient and uh, get into the, 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 the core of the work more I mean, faster. And then uh, I, I could package the, the guideline in Debian and respond to bug reports. That could be like issue tracker to add suggestions to it. Publish on the Debian website, that would get translations as well. And then have it linked from wherever it could be useful, like I was thinking the Debian mailing list pages. Uh, but not as a policy, please. That are just intended to be suggestions. And then see, because there's overlap with the developer's reference, and uh, maybe I should sit down later on with ABBA, and if there's other maintainers of, of the developer reference, and um, actually work together if we should merge what, and uh, yeah. And then uh, keep a watchful eye for things that could be added, because it is, I mean, every time I talk with someone about it, there's new ideas coming up. So now I want to know what's in the guidelines. I try to uh, illustrate as much as possible during this time. I would like you to tell people about the guideline, possibly, again, not as finger pointing, but um, if you think that could be a useful piece of knowledge for them. Uh, and then watch out for potential, uh, potential additions to the guideline and let me know. 
And that's uh, the uh, homepage, the website, well, I mean, the, the address where you can find the guideline, and you can just pull them with Bazaar, look at commits I do, and that's just published over there. So this is the introduction, and uh, I we have a few minutes for questions. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have more, uh, but uh, well, we can do our best in this time. Um, you have a part. A st sorry, I, I'm Roland. Um, you have um, a section of your guidelines about online communication. Uh, I would suggest adding just one more guideline is take it offline if you can. I mean, come to DevConf. Um, if you happen to uh, be able to meet uh, the person in real life, then it probably um, diffuses any possible frameworks you can have with that person later. <laughs> Flames. There's actually another addition that um, came to my mind uh, recently, which is use your friends. Uh, actually, I, I had this coming uh, in bits and pieces from different people, but um, the idea is that you should not be alone against the whole Debian project, and we have a few people who are in this unfortunate position, but it really doesn't bother your friends if you actually talk with them and discuss an idea before bringing it to the wide public. Um, that helps the idea to improve that you get support if people turn down your idea and uh, it, it really helps and I've been talking at Linux Tag with someone who was really frustrated because every time they made like an, a suggestion into a list it would get like good critiques and bad critiques and they wouldn't know which were most important and I suggested well discuss them with friends oh I don't have friends make friends you are at Linux Tag there's Debian developers go out and know people and try to remember their names. And that is like something I'd like to add to the guideline, but I still have to figure out the good wording for it. Yeah, somebody mentioned you know, coming to events like this. Um, there's another thing that I don't think gets used often enough, and that's the just pick up the telephone option. Um, I'm, su I'm intrigued at how many people seem to you know, get all worked up about somebody hasn't been responding to emails, hasn't answered my mail. I asked them an important question, you know, why can't they be bothered to answer? And when somebody, someone, me or someone else, finally gets around to picking up the phone and calling them, you discover that they've had a death in the family or you know, their company fell apart or something like that happened. And uh, it, it's part of this taking it offline, going out of band thing. But I think sometimes uh, it, it, we, we forget the simple stuff like this. Yes, you know, an international phone call is not free, but it's uh, darn cheap compared to sitting around being unhappy for the rest of your life. And there's VOIP. There's VOIP now, so, but we can. Hi, my name is Mark Allen. I would like to second that um, comment. Um, uh, telephone, if you are at work and you're in the same building with a person and they don't respond to your email and they don't respond to your telephone, walk over and visit them in their cube or find them in the cafeteria. Um, I send email. If I don't hear it back in one day, I'll try a telephone message. If I don't get a response on my telephone message in a day, uh, and I don't get a vacation indicator, I will walk over to their cube or their area and try to find them and see what's happening. Okay, time's up. Uh, so feel free to bump on me later, and I, I don't know if what that means in English, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to step on me, and is that correct? <laughs> I don't know, like, feel free to talk with me. And um, propose additions, patches are the most uh, appreciated, so you make the effort of um, adding things using the, um, using the dogmas that I came up with and see how difficult it is. Um, well, um, too slow of a laptop to get to the dogma. <laughs> um, so you make an effort to, to actually follow that, and it's fairly difficult, but it really helps you to get your ideas clear. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, being here, and well, I'll see you the next of the conference.